church, you can just repeat our God. Yes, He is not compared of anything. He is our God. We can do it better, church. We can just do it better. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. 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 We thank God. We thank the Lord so much. Praise the Lord. Thank you. Thank you so much for, for turning on in the in the prayer session and I invite you again I welcome you again to our Sunday service to our worship service just feel in the right place as we tally to hear what uh, the Lord is planning for us today for those who are watching us uh, online those who are joining us there online we welcome you as well just feel in the right place just tally and see what the Lord is going to do today we thank you so much for joining us thank you church even as we we welcome the music team to just take us to the next level that is the, the music and the worship and the praises. Welcome, welcome music. Praise Yahweh. Praise God. Yeah. I want us to sing for this Lord who takes it over. Over our every situation. Such that we make it through. Praise the Lord. Yeah. So I want us to... To, to confess that all of us have a testimony that God takes it over. Praise the Lord. Yes. So just move a bit.
us to you, O oh God. We surrender all that we are unto you, O oh God. Take your place in our hearts. Take your place in our hearts.
you to have your way, oh God. We ask you to have your way in our lives, oh God. For we can do nothing without you, Jesus. We need you to light our paths, oh God. We need you to be our lead, oh God. We need you to be our king. We need you to be our shepherd, Lord, as we follow you, oh God. We need you to speak to us. We need you to speak to our hearts, oh God. you want from us oh Lord we need you to help us we need you to help us to do it Lord in the name of Jesus we need you to fill our hearts Lord with your spirit Lord that we may give you true worship
just take a minute and lift the Lord high. You can praise Him for His greatness. Yes, as we just enjoy His amazing presence in our midst this morning. We can afford to just lift Him high. You could think through the great things He's done for you. house you are a sinner you did not know anything but he died for you he rose that you will have life today how oh, he just released himself to forthcome and live in you in full measure that you will have fullness of life you will have life in its abundance you can lift him up you can lift him up you can praise his name you can glory in his name you can adore his glorious name you can praise his mighty name yes you can afford to lift him up and your praise is gonna set higher you can give him all the glory you can give him the praise he deserves yes this morning i give you praise lord how you descended to live and save me it's an amazing affair it's an amazing thing it's an amazing thought and i praise your name i praise your name i praise your name oh i praise your name lord i praise your name this morning and we give you praise for gathering us to worship and to just commemorate the great things you did for us we are forever grateful thank you so much and church as we have our seats i would love to welcome us to the sharing of the lord's table And I'm reading a few scriptures from the book of John, chapter 20. I would want to begin from verse 11 and not one as I had thought. John, chapter 20, from verse 11. The Bible says, Now Mary stood outside the tomb, crying as she wept. She bent over to look into the tomb and saw two angels in white seated where Jesus' body had been one at the head and the other at the foot they asked her woman why are you crying they have taken my lord away she said and i don't know where they have put him at this she turned around and saw jesus standing there but she did not realize that it was jesus and he asked her woman why are you crying who is it that you are looking for thinking he was the gardener she said sir if you have carried him away tell me where you have put him and i will get him jesus said to mary she turned towards him and cried out in aramaic raboni which means teacher jesus said do not hold on to me for i have not yet ascended to the father go instead to my brothers and tell them i am ascending to my father and your father to my god and your god Mary Magdalene went to the disciples with the news I have seen the Lord and she told them that he sorry and she told them that he had said these things to her and I'm reading these words such an incident that happened 
on such a day way back over 2,000 years ago when our Lord Jesus had been crucified and been buried in a tomb and was covered over with a stone and on the third day Mary came to look perhaps if he would find the body of the Lord Jesus there and the account we've just read describes what she found she found he was not there and John interestingly tells us that as she was trying to find out where Jesus was she realized that he was standing beside her an amazing affair he was no longer in the grave he was risen not only risen but could communicate even to Mary to assure her that yes I was buried but I'm no longer in the grave I am risen and so please go ahead and tell my people that I have risen and I'm going to ascend to my father who is your father too and I'm going to ascend to your God who is your God too and tell them I'm no longer in the grave an amazing affair that on such a day on Friday we were thinking through how Jesus suffered on the cross and he rested in the tomb the whole of yesterday and today the third day he arose and he was no longer in the grave he arose up just to show us he's above death he's above all things that will tie a man down he's above all things that will tie us in a way that we cannot rise up there is power that will raise him from the dead and that power which is inherent in him is in us today why because us who are believers who have accepted the Lord Jesus as the Lord and Savior of their lives he lives in us in full measure not only with his heart not only with his head but he says I am in you in fullness of his measure in fullness of his power he's dwelling in us in fullness of his grace he's dwelling in us and this morning we are celebrating the resurrection of our Lord Jesus as still we commemorate how he died for us on the cross lest we forget that he died for us and lest we forget that we are alive today because he lives in us praise the Lord so as I welcome the leaders to unveil the table I'll still remind us that as we celebrate the Holy Communion today I want us to keep commemorating over and over and as we keep doing this ordinance every month today we are thinking at the power that raised Jesus from the dead as we remember how he died on the cross for you and I and so as we will always say for a good man like you and I he came and died for you he loved you so much and 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 loved you to the uttermost that you will not only live here but even after you go six feet under you do not uh, uh, you are not afraid of anything because you know there is eternity to dine with him forever yes as he died on the cross as he cried and he was crushed it did not end him or did not stop him from accomplishing the redemption story you know at times we think he went there because of our sins or he went there because of the bad things we did and he hanged there so that we can be redeemed no yes it's true but again you know what was making him to tarry there longer and longer was the love for you and i the love that he had for you and I was telling him just hang on a little bit further that you accomplish this task and that the world will be reconciled and reconciled back to its creator God the Father and today I welcome us to partake of the Holy Communion in the remembrance of the works that he did for us in this season of Easter celebration and this is Easter Sunday the day that our Lord Jesus Christ resurrected from the dead there's a few instructions is that you do not need to be a member of this church for you to partake of the Holy Communion it is legible to anyone who is born again if you are a believer and you accept the Lord Jesus Christ as the Lord and Savior of your life you are legible to partake of the Lord's table but if you've not you are not saved you do not recognize or you've never accepted Jesus as the Lord and Savior of your life please just allow the emblems to pass you and 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 just enjoy fellowship with us as we partake but if you want to partake and you're not saved we'll give you an opportunity to give your life to Jesus and then as you plug in in the kingdom of God you'll be eligible to partake of the Lord's table and 
as we keep reminding us we are not doing it because we must do it we are doing it because we are thinking back and reflecting and remembering that indeed we are saved not because of ourselves not because of our strength not even because we wanted and not even because we only chose but because somebody died and there's a cost that was paid for it and therefore we want to ask us as we partake of it we are taking it with awe and reverence to the works of the cross if you are taking it with contempt again and you are not sure you are right with god please just allow the emblems again to pass you and again children are not allowed to partake of this until we they are of age and we teach them what all this means and then they will be able to partake of it and the last instruction is that we will wait for one another as you receive the bread and the cup please do not go ahead and take wait for one another so that we will be able to partake together so the body of jesus christ was smitten and he went through all the pain that we have good health and that we will live in full of abundance of amazing health in this world and not only that that we will enjoy life as we live in this body and so will i have the body the emblem of the bread and i will pray thank you shall we pray god we pray that as we partake of your bread we will have good moments as it's being crushed in our mouths yes we will remember that's how your body was crushed for us as we partake of this we take you with thanksgiving and lord we pray that you will heal them who are sick yes as it crashes down their bosom god i pray that you will do a miracle in the lives of your people and that lord we will yet again receive the great miracle of the cross and the great miracle of good health by the stripes you were hit on this body for the glory and honor of your name for this we pray in jesus name and in the same way the blood of jesus was shed as an atoning sacrifice that our sins will be washed away may I have a cup please shall we pray and god we thank you for the blood that you shed that we will be cleansed and be made holy again and acceptable before you that we will be restored back to our maker lord we appreciate for this blood the sacrifice that you shed on the cross wiping away and taking away all sins that when god looks at us he sees blood and sees nothing else and counts us forgiven and righteous and so as we partake of it lord we pray that lord you will cleanse us you will refresh us in the name of jesus we thank you and we give you praise in jesus name we pray amen and so i'll ask our leaders to serve us as our music team will be ministering with the song and then we'll wait for one another to partake
wanted to be served and you're not served, you can just signal us so that we can serve you. Good. In, in Paul's in Paul's exhortation and correction to the church in Corinth, he tells them how they were supposed to be doing this ordinance. And so in 1 Corinthians 11, 23, 26, verse 3, sorry, 23, the Bible says, For I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Shall we take off the body together? And in the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. Shall we partake of the cup together? I'll tell you to take just a minute of meditation. And think about how Christ died for you. And if it were not for him, where would you be today? And at this moment, are you in any struggle? Are you in any kind of thing that you need God's intervention? Make a prayer in your heart. You can just tell the Lord, I'm tired of living in sin. I'm tired of this struggle. I'm tired of this pain. I'm tired of this kind of life. And today, as I remember how you resurrected and how you died for us, I pray that I receive new life. Shall we pray? Lord, we thank you and we give you praise. We are humbled and honored to worship a living God who is not an idol, a God who has ears, a God who feels what his children go through, a God who is so much concerned about the welfare of his people. And today as a fellowship, Lord, we remember how you were smitten, how you were crushed on that terrible Roman cross that we would receive life. And so we are grateful that we are worshipping you today. And we are glad that you saved us. Thank you for saving us, Lord. And thank you for loving us too much. We appreciate you, oh God. And I pray this moment that, Lord, be there any person in our midst, Lord, who is struggling with anything. I pray that your power that rose you from the dead will just visit them wherever they are in the name of Jesus. Yes, and be there any who are in pain and any kind of sickness. I pray that the Lord, oh God, you are power that rose you from the dead will touch their bodies and their souls lord and them who are in I mean, in, who are broken and they are crushed, they don't know what to do. I pray that today they will receive the, res the resurrection life as you breathe in them a new life in the name of Jesus. So Lord, we appreciate you and we give you praise for you alone, our God and our Father. For this is our prayer in the name of the Father, of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You can just appreciate the Lord for that Amen. moment. Amen. Amen. So as our leaders collect the the cups, um, I will ask our ashes to organize us for offering. And as our ashes organize us for offering, I would love to ask if there's any guest in our midst. You are coming for the first time, you've never fellowshiped with us, you've never been to Grace Chapel International Chuka. And just raise up your hand wherever you are, we will appreciate you. Any guests in our midst this morning? Any visitor? Good, we can appreciate them in their, their absence. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, thank you. So the ushers will organize us for 
offering. Um, if you're giving online, you can use our pay bill on our walls. And, and also those watching us online, there's a pay bill posted in our account number. And those in person, if you love to give cash, we give from the front. You're welcome to give. If you need an envelope, our ushers, Lucy and Sukunta, are waiting on you. Uh, you will just raise your hand up and they will serve you. So if you need an envelope or any other form of offering you want to give, they will wait on you. Amen. Welcome. the priest team as a good seat. Let us pray for offerings. Our Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we are before you at this time. We thank you because of your faithfulness. Thank you even because of providing for us, oh God, even to a point of us giving, Lord. We pray that you're going to bless us, oh God, even for the ones who have not given, Lord. We pray that you're going to increase in them in the, in the mighty name of Jesus, oh God. Continue providing for us and be with us, oh God. We bless you and we honor you. And it is through the name of Jesus we pray, believing and trusting in your name. Praise the Lord. Yeah, so I'm Vivian David. I am born again. I love the Lord as my personal savior. And I am, I am happy to see you. 
uh, we would like uh, to thank all who attended Good Friday service. We had a Good Friday service that is on Friday, and I believe that you are you are blessed. So thank you for attending uh, that service. For the spices in the house, yes, uh, may the Lord bless you for the ones who attended the fellowship that you had uh, on Sunday. I believe you learned something there. Sindio, enam libariki wasana. And may the Lord bless our moms uh, who are there to support us, who are, who are there to support us, to talk to us, to encourage us as spices. And I believe that there is something that you took home with you. So uh, thank you so much. Uh, on uh, the coming Friday, we'll be having a worship experience. It will be in the afternoon. And uh, we are invited to come. Uh, that you, uh, so that you may be able to have a great encounter in the presence of the Lord. You can invite a friend, a relative. Yeah, you can invite the friends that you have for them to come so that you can be able to experience the Lord together. Praise the Lord. Yeah, and uh, to the four years who are having their exams, I wish you all the best. May the Lord give you a mind of remembrance. Buona sifiwe. Yes, we can clap our hands as we welcome the man of God. Thank you, Vivian. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Um, I welcome us to the listening of the words, uh, the word of the Lord. And I believe that the Lord will bless us. And uh, before we do so, I want to welcome our Sunday school so that we pray for them. Um, our Sunday school and the teachers on duty, please come. We release you. Yes, come, 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 Sunday school. And uh, the, the teachers have... Uh, reminded us that we need a class for our toddlers. Uh, they are quite a number in church currently. Um, and uh, they have asked us if we have toys at home that we are not using. Uh, we bring them to church. So, uh, Kinamama Gavril, if there are toys at home that your uh, children are no longer using, go to Lete. Sister Ruth, <laughs> I doubt there are any. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The mothers here. If you have toys in the house that you are not using, uh, please uh, bring them to church so that we can help our Sunday school teachers. Let's pray for them and uh, release them to attend their class. Our children are not here. They are attending um, a Bible vocation class uh, at GCI in Nairobi. We were attending a conference with them, and uh, they went and connected so much with their old friends. Uh, you know old friends? And uh, yesterday when we were coming here, actually they were crying. They said they don't want to come, they want to go to the Degua to connect with their friends again today. So that is why they are not here. Um, and it was such a serious discussion. You know, for us will be here the whole week, and they will be in Nairobi the whole we told them now that you have refused to go with us. So they'll be there for the whole week, uh, but all is well. Let's pray for these children. Lord, we are excited for giving us children in this church. And we are grateful for their teachers and indeed their parents. We commit them to you as they attend their class, that Lord, you will be with them. We speak your blessings to these children. And we pray that, Lord, you will give their teachers wisdom and knowledge to teach them in a manner that they can understand your word. We bless them and we pray for concentration as they listen to your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you very much and uh, God bless you. Um, just to emphasize on the announcement on uh, our worship experience on Friday, um, I kindly request all of us to attend our worship experience on Friday. Uh, remember our worship experience is not just a moment to come and experience God, but we also use it as an evangelism tool. Uh, we also use it as a reach out uh, 
tool so please invite as many as possible ask them to come uh, don't be worried we will know how you will go home uh, I know some of you might be wondering after 8 p.m. what do I do um, we will we will know how you get home uh, safely one as if we and the Lord is doing as well the Lord is doing as well please come and uh, let us celebrate the doings of the Lord um, I'm looking for Pastor Mark I was to ambush him and I will still ambush him there is a song I wanted us to do uh, before I share the Word of God you know today is, uh, is Easter we are celebrating Easter and uh, when we celebrate Easter it is always good to remind ourselves of what the Lord did for us it is always good to keep us reminded that the enemy has lost it's a song that was done by um, another U.S. singer. The name is uh, Disappearing. I don't know why it's Lon Kennelly. Yeah? It's a song he used to sing. It is such fun to see, such fun to see. Do you know that song? <laughs> Pardon. This one is our generation here too. <laughs> it is such fun to see. Satan lose. How comes you've not heard of that song? It is such fun to see, such fun to see. Satan lose. It is such fun to see, such fun to see. Jesus is a winner man, a winner man, a winner man. You've not heard of that song? Now there's a difference between 40 years and 25. <laughs> That's for sure. If you have not heard of that song, then there's a big difference between 40 and 25. But uh, there's a song I want us to sing, and I ask our music team to come and Pastor Mark to come. He knows the song. Um, I want us to sing this song that says, He is always doing great things. Jehovah Rapha, na, 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 he keeps on doing great things. And I want us to celebrate like we understand that song. Wambu, I, I, I hope you get it in your songs. Yes. Let us stand up. We, I want us to do that song. Amen. Not for one minute, not for two minutes, and not for three minutes, and not for four, for five minutes. Yeah? So we, we are not passing time. <laughs> we are not passing, passing time. time. We, we want to do that song as if those words make meaning to you as if they mean something to you. So, Pastor, don't pass time. Uh, we, we are serious. Karibu sana. He keeps on doing the thing. 
Just take a moment and thank the Lord because of what he has done for you. 
Just take a moment of worship before the presence of the Lord. Just give a thanksgiving to Him. Yes, when we remember Easter, we see the sacrifice, we see the sacrifice of the Son of God on the cross for you and for me. And because He died on the cross and resurrected, yes, 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 the Bible tells us that our Redeemer is, our Redeemer is, our Redeemer is, and because He does, we can face every situation, we can face every circumstance in our lives. Hallelujah. Mitenda, 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 mambo magu, mitenda, 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 mambo magu, mitenda, mambo. So doing great things, hallelujah. He keeps on doing great things. Let us sing together. He keeps on doing great things, hallelujah. He keeps on doing great things. He keeps on doing great things. He keeps on doing great things. Yes, Lord. Even this morning, God, you are in the business of doing great things. As we tell in your presence to listen to your word, pray that, Lord, before this service comes to an end, you will have done mighty and great things to these people that are listening today. Pray that by the power of your Holy Spirit, you will come and heal the sick. Lord, you will come and set the captives free oh god you will come and speak good news to the poor and to those that are languishing in pain lord i pray that as a vessel lord you will use me for your glory this morning may you come and refresh us come and speak to us in a manner that we can understand your word we love you god and we praise you for this is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Come on, celebrate the Lord as we take our seats. Thank you very much. Jesus, God bless you. You can take your seats. Amen. 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 Um. Wow. John chapter 20 from verse 1 amazing actually I was telling my wife uh, Pastor Mark is hijacking my message uh, because uh, uh, the scriptures he read is exactly what I'm preaching today we are not discussed so that's how the Lord confirms his word um, John chapter 20 from verse 1 um, our topic for the day today is go ye and um, I have also added something as the father sent me so send I you and as we read the, these scriptures together, I want us to, I want us to, to keep thinking. And uh, I remind us that every time we read scriptures, I want you to be figurative. I want to see, I want you to sync with the story. I mean, I want you to see how the story is running so that you can appreciate 
the, the emotions that were flying then. You can appreciate the feelings um, that were there. And uh, you can connect much easily. And uh, that's the beauty of reading scriptures. And uh, that's why we keep liking uh, reading scriptures together. So that we can, we can swim together as we get understanding from the word of God. The Bible says that early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the entrance. Verse 2. So she came running to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one that Jesus loved and said, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb and we don't know where they have put him. Please stop there. Um, you, you can already see what this lady is going through. And I want to encourage you at your free time, go and check who Mary Magdalene was. So that you understand the pain she is going through at this moment. Right? She has gone to the tomb and she finds uh, the tomb is empty. And uh, the Bible says she came and uh, she told Peter and who? Who else was told about this message? The other disciple. You know, sometimes I get amazed as I read scripture. We don't know why John found it so difficult just to tell us who it was. But uh, do we know who it was? Who was it? It was John himself. You know, uh, <laughs> you know that sometimes that is what humility does. You know when you're saying, uh, yo kitu kuna mtu alifanya. Na, na unajua vizuri ni ni wao walifanya so unatulia tu. So John, John is not willing to say it was him. Uh, but he is talking about that other disciple that Jesus wow. <laughs> and you know these these things happen when you are either telling a good story or a bad story, when the story is so good, you don't want to appear proud. But also when the story is so bad, you don't want to appear bad. You remember like uh, John Mark. You remember John Mark, that guy that, uh, that, uh, that, uh, that ran naked. There is a night John Mark literally ran naked. I'm so when John Mark talks about this story, he talks about a young man that did what? That ran and left his clothes. He doesn't want to say it was. It was John Mark. He, so when you read the book of Mark, he doesn't describe himself. But it is John Mark that was so afraid when he saw Jesus has been arrested, when he saw the things that were happening and people started suspecting. Then, uh, you know, Peter has gone. The other disciples have disappeared. And this young boy realized, now he's appearing in one daddy. So he ran and he left his clothes there. And when he gives a story, he doesn't want to say it was John Mark. So it's the same case here. So John is saying the other disciple that Jesus loved and said they have taken the body out of the tomb and we don't know where they are put him. Verse 3. Verse 3. Tukutendelesa. Vanasifesan. Verse 3. So Peter and the other disciples started <laughs> for the tomb. Ikingeleza nao ni ngumu. They started for the so they've been told the body is not there. So starting for the tomb, it's like on your marks, guess it, go. And check if this woman is telling the truth. Remember, John and Peter knew who Mary Magdalene was. Some of these women that were going to anoint the body of Jesus, some of them actually, the Bible tells us how Jesus has driven out many demons from them, right? Some of these women, actually some of them were in prostitution. You know, when they came and Jesus preached to them, they were, they, they were not living some very good lives. But they are here, they are serving the master. And so, the Bible says that Peter and the other, <laughs> the other disciple started for the tomb. Verse 4. Both were doing what? They were walking, right? They were running. The, the news was so urgent. They were running. Look at this young man. But the other disciple, he outran Peter. So John does not want to say, I was quicker. You can imagine, maybe, maybe Peter was either older, 
than John, or maybe he was heavier than uh, John. You know, if I start running with the other Dan today, nitaonyeshwa kivu. Sikupenda ni vile I am older, <laughs> or maybe I'm heavier than him. So John is saying, I was very fast, and I outran Peter, and I reached to the tomb fast. Verse five. He bent over and looked at the strips of the ring and lying there, but did not go in. Then Simon Peter came along behind him and went straight into the tomb. He saw the stripes of the linen lying there. As well as the cloth that had been wrapped around Jesus' head, the cloth was still lying in its place separate from the linen. Verse 8. Finally, the other disciple who had reached the tomb first also went inside and he saw and he believed. So he runs fast. The news is so good to hear. He is very quick. He gets to the tomb, but he doesn't get inside. He waits for this uh, slow-running man called Peter. Peter appears. He enters to the tomb. He realizes, yes, Jesus is not there. And John gets the courage. He also gets in. Are we together up to there? Is something ringing into your mind already? That John and Peter, they were given good news. But verifying this good news was not an easy one. Even when the news was so good, it was not an easy one. The verification process was not an easy one, and especially for John. They still did not understand from scripture that Jesus had to rise from the dead. Verse 10. Then the disciples went back where they were staying. Now Mary stood outside the tomb crying as she wept she bent over to look into the tomb. I want you to see the difference between this man and this woman. So, how are they going to go? How are they going to go? And the Bible says they went back where they were living. But Mary is still not convinced. Why is Mary not still convinced? Because she doesn't know where the body is. Then she... she <laughs> And so, two angels in white seated where Jesus And so Jesus standing and knew that it was Jesus. Now this, this, this woman is not just satisfied that the body is not there. Number two, she is not even satisfied that the men are telling her that he has risen until Jesus himself comes and he confirms that indeed I am the risen Messiah. Verse 15, the Bible says, And Jesus said unto her, Woman, why are you weeping? Who are you seeking? She, supposing him to be the gardener, said unto him, Sir, if you have, if you have borne him hence, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. So Jesus is there, he's telling the lady that I am the one. 
But then she thinks this must be the guy who has been employed to be looking at uh, this place. Bwana sipwe sana. Now I need to explain to you why Mary could have been right thinking this is a gardener. Remember who went to bury Jesus? Who went to bury Jesus? Joseph of Arimathea. Okay? And Joseph of Arimathea, he was a man of resources. He was a rich man. Actually, he went and acquired that piece so that Jesus can be buried there. So the woman could have thought, most likely, Joseph of Arimathea maybe could have employed someone to be looking after this area. And then she is telling him, if you have taken him, please tell me where you have taken him and I'll go and get him. Verse 16. Jesus said to her, Mary, she turns toward him and cried out in Aramic, Rabboni, which means teacher. Verse 17. Jesus said, do not hold on to me, for I have not yet ascended to the Father. Go instead to my brothers and tell them, I am ascending to my father and your father to my God, your God. Verse 18. Mary Magdalene went to the disciples with the news, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. Verse 19. On the evening of the first day of the week, when the disciples were together, and now, as we get to this verse, remember... There was a disciple called Peter, and there was a disciple called, are we together? Peter and John were in the tomb, and they saw Jesus was not there. But then in the evening, when they were all together, with the doors locked for the fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them, and he said, peace be with you. Now, the Bible clarifies in the book of uh, Matthew chapter 28 that actually, in this place, there were 11 disciples because one of them was not there. Who was not there that day? We are Bible scholars. Who was not there? Judas Iscariot was not there. Okay? But there is this other guy who also when Jesus appeared had gone away so he was not in this meeting and you'll ask me pastor but you said 11 when you read verse, uh, the, the same uh, scripture in, the, in, in chapter 21 you will realize actually no not actually 21 the same chapter 20 towards the end you will realize one other disciple that was not in this meeting was that guy that was doubting. You remember the one that was saying, Mimi nataka akuja niingize nini? Kidole yangu kwa mikono ya? Who was this guy? Thomas was also not in this meeting. So Jesus comes and uh, he tells them, peace be with you. Now I want you to realize one thing, that these people are in a locked place. They are fearing. They are fearing Jews. And why are they fearing Jews? It's because if they have killed our man he have, if they have killed the person that we knew was coming to save us we have seen him die on the cross literally the highest probability is that we can also be killed and so they are hiding the doors are locked but Jesus appears and he tells them peace be with you now that's the beauty of resurrection and I will get there as we proceed. That is the beauty of resurrection. And I want to tell you child of God. Jesus will appear in your situations. When you are not even expecting him to appear. You know when you are locked. When you feel lost. When you are feeling. When you, when you cannot understand what is about to happen in my life. Jesus comes and he tells you. Peace be with you my daughter. Peace be with you my son. And that is why he keeps telling us. Do not worry. For I will be with you. Until the end of the world. Jesus appears. And he gives us encouragement. He tells us peace be with you. At the moment of our discouragement. At the moment of our fear. 
and perhaps today I'm, I'm speaking to you you could be in pain maybe you could be in a dilemma there are things that are happening and you can't even understand what is happening around you you know I see this some of these disciples at some point moment they had actually decided it is better to go back to our normal lives because the guy that was to come and save us he has been killed literally in our sight and when they are hiding and in fear Jesus is telling them peace be with you verse 20 verse 20 after he said this he showed them his hands and sighed and the disciples were overjoyed when they saw the Lord I want for a moment for you to imagine this is Sunday morning and Jesus was crucified on Friday and I want to remind us that the crucifixion process was not an easy one hallelujah it was a tough one let me ask you and someone asked us this question in the conference that we were attending and uh, it, 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 it hit me hard do you know Jesus stayed on the cross from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. that was not an easy journey I mean you know sometimes we think that they crucified him and he died after 20 minutes from 9 a.m. 9 10 11 12 1 2 3 6 hours at Golgotha that place was you know you know it was like a desert are we together you know Israel is known for deserts so it was a dry place you know it was a place for punishment for crooks so they didn't want people just to die laughing <laughs> that is why they whipped him first then they pierced him I mean it was tough and for six hours Jesus was in pain and I keep wondering for those that are here and you're not born again what do you think about the death of Jesus on the cross for you I mean it was so painful it was it was such a painful death you know, some people say if you if you want to kill me you better just come and uh, but you can imagine six hours with nails on your hands nails on your feet you have been pierced on the ribs you are feeling a lot of pain then when you ask for water they come and give you vinegar pain they are flying you know umai, umai papa. Eh? assume ni pili pili kwa kidonda and that is what they are doing on him he is he is crying on the cross and God has shown him his back because he is carrying our sins on his shoulders and for six hours of anguish Jesus is on the cross he said Eloi Eloi my father my father why have you forsaken me for six hours calling for help and no one is coming and these disciples thought it is the end we can also tutakujiwa so they go to hide then after he said this he showed them his hands and the disciples were joyed and excited so i want you to imagine jesus has just appeared at gci chuka this morning in person i mean he, he was killed he is buried we are hiding here and then all of a sudden poop jesus appears i imagine we could be celebrating by now you know that presence you know you know presence and he shows them and he confirms i am the one I imagine the disciples would have started celebrations immediately verse 21 I want you to see what Jesus did again Jesus said what peace be with you I mean he started by peace be with you 
But even when I have confirmed that my life, you still need peace. Because of the things that are about to start happening after this. So, your celebration is okay. You can be excited that I'm alive. You can be very, very happy that I'm alive. But then he tells them, even after this verification and confirmation, peace be with you. Why? As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. Sema kime umana. <laughs> As the Father has sent me, so I am sending you. And so you need a lot of peace. Verse 22. And with that, he breathed on them and he said what? Receive the Holy Spirit. <sighs> sometimes, sometimes we see Mawira praying for people and then I'll... Uh, Sometimes we get some of these revelations from the scriptures. Okay, so Jesus has breath on them, and then he tells them, Receive what? The Holy Spirit. Receive the Holy Spirit. And do you know, even after he left, he told them, Go and wait for them. Are we together, church? Are we Bible scholars? He still told them, go and wait for the Holy Spirit. And I ask you, what has just happened here in this meeting? He has breath on them. And he has told them, receive the Holy Spirit. But he still tells them, you will go and wait. And I will send you an helper. And who was that helper? The Holy Spirit. And I ask you, why was this necessary? Amazing. Amazing and amazing. And then verse 23, if you forgive anyone's sins, their sins are forgiven. If you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. Verse 24. Now Thomas, also known as Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with the disciples when Jesus came. Wana tembelewa huyumze ayuko. Verse 25. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the nails marks in his hands and put my finger where the nails were and put my hand unto his side, I will not believe. Verse 25, 26. A week later, his disciples were in the house again. Still fearing. You know, I, I, by this Biblia <laughs> They are still fearing. One week away. The Holy Spirit has been given to them. But they were still in the house. And Thomas was with them. Though the doors were locked, Jesus came again. And he stood among them and he said, Again, Peace be. Maneno is serious. Peace be with you. Then verse 27. And, and remember, you know, one week is not an easy thing. Imagine, Yesu, unambiwa Yesu, amefufuka. Na kila mutu amemuona, ni wewe tu wauja muona. Sikus saba. Unasikia tu wako excited. Wasema by the way, halikuwa na kaivi, halikuwa na kaivi. Thomas ako huko. Didi masa meshanga. Muka muona aji. Hii maneno mu. Una, unaona? Ni kama vila ukisikia kamushene. Na huku hapo. Una venye unatakanga. Kupata clarity. So Thomas is just hearing this news and he feels like they are not true. And he says unless I also... See, with my eyes, I am not about to believe. Then he said to Thomas, put your finger here. Where you wanted them to? to where you wanted to put them? Put them here. See my hands. Reach out your hand and put it into my side. Stop doubting and believe. No, Jesus is not like, like us. No, Jesus also understands some of our unbeliefs. You know, there are some things that we can tell you and uh, you, you, you appear not to believe it can happen. 
And Jesus comes to confirm to Thomas. He doesn't, actually he tells them, he tells him, blessed is the one who believes without seeing. Yes, but he still came and confirmed to him that I am the one that is resurrected. I want to say this, church of God. Jesus meets with his disciples and when we see a, they, uh, they see what has, be, uh, has happened, they, they started fearing. They were a fearful group. And why is this so? You know, for us, we have been, we, we had over 2,000 years plus to learn about Christ and for Christ to be explained to us so that we can understand and love him and follow him. But these guys have only a few days. Actually, it is Friday from 3 p.m., then Saturday, then today is Sunday in the evening. So it's just a few days when they are receiving this news. So they had all the reasons to doubt. And they were doubting. They were fearful. But then Jesus is telling them, peace be with you, my people. Because as the Father has sent me, so send I you. And for the few minutes that I have, I want us to look at the ministry of Jesus. Because what Jesus is telling them, just the way I was sent, that is what I want you to go and do. And so you need to understand that statement from a sending perspective. What was Jesus sent to do? And when he was sent by the Father, how did he do it? Because he wanted them to execute it the same way he executed it. As the Father sent me, so do I send you. Luke chapter 4 and verse 18. Luke chapter 4 and verse 18. One more. 4 and verse 18. This is why Jesus came. The Bible says the Spirit of the Lord is on me. Because he has anointed me to do what? To proclaim good news to the poor. Now, this is why he was sent. And for you to understand the commission, go ye, you need to understand the sending command. As the Father sent me, so do I send you. So the Father sent Jesus to do this. To proclaim the good news. Number two, he sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners. And to recovery of sight for the blind. To set the oppressed free. Verse 19. To proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. That is why Jesus was sent by God. And therefore as we understand about go ye today. I want you to understand it from that perspective. Because Jesus commission to you and to me. Is the same commission from the father to Christ himself. And as we proceed I want you to know. That just the way God called for a meeting in heaven. You remember, there's a scripture that says, and they were asking, who shall I? To tattoo manani. Jesus is still asking, who shall I send? Because he accepted the calling, and he was sent, and he is still looking for people to send, to go and fulfill the mission that he came to fulfill here on earth. And that is why it was clear that the only thing I want you to do is the exact thing that made you to come, made me to come here on earth. And Jesus' expectation was that the same way I executed it is the same way I expect you to execute it. Now, the same method. And what was the method of Jesus Christ? Someone gave a comment and he said, if God gave the command to the angels to evangelize to the world, heaven would be empty in five minutes. They would come running. If evangelism was given to angels, as in Mungu Abia Malaika, ni mewachiria deni muka ubiria watu. He said, heaven would be very empty immediately. But, but, Angels have not been given the joy of making known the gospel. They have no experience of the grace of God. They have not been forgiven. They have no personal knowledge of sin. 
And God's method of reaching out to the world is through a saint that has been forgiven their sins. And that saint is you and it is me. Why? Because we were sinners. We appreciate the value of grace. We appreciate the work of Jesus on the cross. Angels don't understand it. You understand the sins that have been forgiven by your master. You know, yesterday at the conference, someone was reminding us that sometimes we even sin while seated in church. Maybe even as I'm preaching, someone is sinning. Here, yeah, not you. Here. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, if our, our, if our minds were to be open and our hearts were to be open, maybe someone is not even listening to what pastor is saying. Anakumbuka vila mutu waja mulipa pesa yake. Na nazama yi sabe si ishe. Tukapamba? Tukapamba ne atajua ajui. But then even we saw that our sins have been forgiven. Our master shed his blood to set us free. And because of that, there is something that is supposed to push us to go and bring the rest to come and experience the kind of a love that we experience in Christ. That is why the Bible says that while we were yet sinners, Christ died on the cross for you. That is why angels will never evangelize. They will never have the push to go and share the word of God with the people. Because they have not been forgiven. They don't know what grace does. I can tell you, if you're there and you're not born again, we are saved by grace, it's not by works. You know, some people struggle and they say, Pastor, watch an Nintendo Kidoro. Was about what an Ikioko and Anna come and Tanguka. What an Ikwambia do we angu dadangu? At a sisi to your coca. Bado tunawakolewa na Kristo. Neema ya Bwana ndiyo inatube. Ndiyo inatubeba. So some of the things that you are fearing. That when you get to salvation. You will not manage. When you get there. Christ takes over. He gives you the courage. And that is why the Bible says. This grace has appeared to all of us. And it enables us to say no. To every ungodliness. I mean, the men that you see here, the ladies you see here, they are, not, they are not avoiding some of the things that you are doing because they are so good. It is because there is something that is enabling them to say no. You ask me why I don't drink alcohol. There is something that is telling me no. It is wrong. So if you are struggling with alcohol, you just surrender to Christ and see what will happen after that. You just give in. And then you wait to see what you will do with your life. Because it is grace that gives us ability to stand. And that grace pushes us to go to the world and tell them about the love of Christ. And that is why Paul would say at some point that the love of Christ compels us. It compels us. We are here because we are compelled. There is something that we can't help it. The compassion of God. And I want to tell you, because you have tasted the fruits of grace, you cannot wait and observe the world go to hell. You can only tell them about the love of Christ. Because the love of Christ is active. Hallelujah. That is why the Bible says in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 19 to 20, 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 19 to 20. The Bible says that God was reconciling the world to himself in Christ, not counting people's sins against them. And he committed, and he has committed to us the message of reconciliation. You know, that bringing back people to Christ, that ministry of reconciliation has been committed to you. And I love the way Paul describes it. He says that he was not counting their sins. And because we need to do the same way Jesus did it, he therefore says we are therefore Christ's 
ambassadors as though God was making his appeal appeal through us I mean when you go to speak to, to the lost world it is like the Lord is making an appeal through you we implore you on Christ's behalf be reconciled to God as he sent me so do I send you let me tell you something about ambassadors you know you know there's a difference between an ambassador and an eye commissioner do you know that do you know that there's a difference between an ambassador and an eye commissioner so that is why you will never hear of an embassy of Tanzania in Kenya no you hear of the high commission of Tanzania in Kenya but you will hear about the embassy of the US in Kenya okay so the guy who has been sent by Tanzania to Kenya is not an ambassador he is an eye commissioner but the guy who has been sent by the US to Kenya is not an eye commissioner he is a an ambassador can I tell you why now high commissioners are members of the Commonwealth you know most those, those countries that were colonized by uh, the UK they are Britain etc they are members of the Commonwealth so they share so much in common that is why they are they are called a Commonwealth okay hallelujah but ambassadors they come here for a specific business there is nothing in common so they are coming to look for things that they can do in common so when a, an ambassador from the u.s comes to kenya he is coming to look for opportunities so when god says you are my ambassadors this is what he says i put you in the world you are not of the world but you remain in the world and do business for my kingdom Has it escaped? Because I purchased you, you are mine. And so I'm sending to the world, even though you are not of there. You know, Mesha Nunuliwa, so you don't belong to this world, but you're still here. So you are an ambassador of God, a child of the kingdom of God, sent by God to execute the business of the kingdom in this world and that is why the bible is telling us you know this ministry has been given to us you know every time an ambassador is sent to a country they don't start executing anything until they present their papers to the president i don't know if abdallah is here he has worked with the minister of foreign affairs you would understand this is what happens if the u.s embassy sends an ambassador here in kenya and the president is so busy for six months he has no time to meet him he can't do anything he is not allowed he can't and so before they come and start working they go to the sending authority and the sending authority is the president of the country they are coming from he gives them documents okay then once they get documents from the sending country they come and appear before the president of the receiving country and they confirm for sure i have been sent by my president i am here these are the documents of my appointment i am so and so haven't you seen them appearing before the president then they read their credentials you know, you know some of these things the world picks them from the bible so they read their credentials then they go and greet the president and the president tells them karibu sana that is why some of us you remember the sons of skeva in the book of acts when they went to preach what if i want what if i na mapepo walitandikwa mpaka nguo zikai because these were people trying to execute the business of the kingdom without appointing authority and the appointing authority that we have as christians is our salvation in christ 
our faith in him the grace that has been given to us is the credentials that we have and because of that we can appear before any sinner and we tell them i'm, I'm appointed ambassador christ loves you and i'm speaking this on behalf of and that is why then and i say this then we pray that is why when we go to evangelize we should use the same approach that jesus was using you know jesus approach was not judgmental jesus would find a woman at the well this woman had how many men before what was jesus trying to tell this woman he was telling the woman hata huyo umetoka unaenda kutafuta mwingi mwingine uongeze kwa kwa list but do you realize jesus never condemned the woman because the message that he was given by the father was not to condemn the message was given was good news go and tell the good news that is why actually you know john 3:16 is a very powerful scripture and as you do evangelism and reaching out you need to understand that scripture in depth project it for us i know we know it often for god so loved the world kwani mmesikia ja already for god so loved the world <laughs> that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal verse 17 verse 17 for god can we read it louder for god did not send his son into the world to do what to condemn the world so when you go condemning the world who has sent you like the sons of scava you will be whipped because your credentials don't allow to condemn the world and jesus is saying i was not sent to come and condemn the world but to save the world through him and therefore every time we go out to, to evangelize and to tell people about the love of christ we must do it christ's way that is why i love that the movement there is a movement that was very active in the year 2000 and they used to sell some wrists they would ask us what would jesus do so when you go to preach to a drunkard you don't go na ukali wako kwa sababu hukutumwa kwa uka ile mutumo tuko nayo mutumo ile kutumwa tuko metumwa sio ya kuenda na ukali wetu or describing things the way we know them the message that we've been given is a message of reconciliation the way jesus would do it that is the expectation of god go and declare the good news just the way jesus would do it has the father sent me so do i send you so jesus find this woman he has done all karagasha and then he tells her i am the living water i will give you water you will never come looking for water again blah 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 then what does the woman do she goes out and starts telling people come and see this man who has told me everything jesus did not have time to condemn this woman do you remember the woman that was caught in the act hallelujah hallelujah the woman that was caught in the act you know being caught in the act is what people are calling these days red and dead can i even describe it here father being caught in the act is you being found sleeping with another person red-handed that is that is what the bible says in the act and these guys are coming with a woman okay but jesus goes down he rises on the ground by the time anatelemu anawaambia kama wewe hakuna kitu kama hii umefanya chukua mawe rusha then anateremuka tena akiinuka he finds nobody then what does he tell the woman 
Alimwambia toka hapa muzinji wewe. Ama umepatikana. Nilikwambia utapatikana. Unajua ndivyo tunaambianga watu. Nilikwambia utapatikana. Nilikwambia Mungu ataku expose. Umeona sasa? Nilikwambia hizo vitu unafanyanga Mungu atazileta juu. That is not Jesus way. And I have told here again and again. God is never excited when his children are embarrassed. Never. So God is not in the business of embarrassing his children. So acha nikwambie hii kitu na isikustue. Kama utapatikana, ujue sio Mungu amekuaibisha ni shetani. Tuko pamoja. Wapendo bwana asifiwe sana. <laughs> so If Pastor Max today decides to go to a lodging with a lady na wapatikane huko. Usiseme ni Mungu ameexpose pasi. Ni shetani. God forbid mchungaji. Sio Mungu. Ni nani atakuwa amemexpose? Ni shetani because the business of the devil is to shame the children of God. You know we need to keep learning and unlearning. Spiritu zingine tunawekeleanga Mungu. Tunakwambia sex before marriage is wrong. Usilale, usilale, usilale. Unaenda unalala unapata mimba. Alafu tunasema Mungu amekufunua. Hapana. Ni shetani. Shetani amefanya nini? Because the strategy of God. Actually Mungu anakupeanga opportunity mingi tu utubu. That is why utalala na ukuje hapa na tusijue. Na ukae hapa na utuashe kanisani utusalimie na tuketi na tusimile. Sio nyinyi nasemea, ukuje hapa na ufanye projection na tusijue. Bena uchape drums, sio wewe nasemea, na tusijue. You know in the Old Testament if these things were to happen, ukuje hapa na hizo madoido unakufa. That is what the old Unajua alikuwa anaingia mpaka na kengele kwa miguu. Ama amjasoma ili ukikufia huko unavurutwa. But these days the days of the grace God gives you opportunities to repent. He is not in the business of shaming his children. So when a shame comes it is from the devil. So wapenda usingoje shetani ya kuanike. Jua kikuanika ananga huruma. Shetani ni muaniki. Ni muaniki. <laughs> Unajua sometimes sometimes he wants to expose you and God forbids him. Unajua God can forbid him. <laughs> Bona sipo sana. God can forbid the enemy. Anamwambia pana huwezi anika Jocelyn size. And you know the devil he says and he has God. So ana pia Josephine opportunity Josephine repent sio wewe Josephine nasemea ni Josephine anakaa kama wewe ana pia mwingine anakataa anakataa then the devil gets an opportunity and then anani nasema Mungu alikuanika hapana Jesus style of ministry is to reconcile so even when you think you are rotting Jesus is still looking for an opportunity to bring you back to him he never gives us on men never That is why to that woman he told the woman go and sin no more. That is why when he is talking to the disciples he is telling them whoever you shall forgive shall be forgiven. The ministry of reconciliation. I mean church of God you are a minister you have been called to go and bring them forgive them. I've been told and it is true and unfortunately this day, these days We we are the only army that that uh, that tramps on the, the the wounded soldiers. So mudada na niko na jetani na si tuna tuna join. So acha nikwambie na mimi ni mchungaji napenda Kristo. Ukiona mtu ameanikwa na jetani kazi yako kwa huyo mtu ni kumsaidia kurudia Kristo. 
Sema amen. Kazi yako ni kumzaidia kurudia Kristo. Ukijipata umeingia kwa hiyo kampeni ya kumwanika umeingia kwa chama ya shetani. My wife anasema oshie. Ama umesema <laughs> oshindwe. Amesema jimbo mfululizo. Bwana ziwe sana. Umeingia kwa chama ya So kama uko kwa chama ya kuanika dada yako ama ndugu yako katika Kristo ujue uko kwa kambi ya Yesu kwa sababu kwa kambi ya Yesu ni ku reconcile people back to him so any moment you see a weakness in pastor Mawera and you go and tell someone else thinking that you are exposing pastor Mawera i want to tell you you are in the devil's camp you are doing his ministry na ako na ma minister wengi mpaka kanisani ma minister wa devil wameja wameja you know i've told you sometimes we 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 we, we depict the devil as that thing with a long tail long tail with an angry head and some horns no he comes in like an angel in church he can even be leading music in, inside a certain brother or a sister and akuja kroge watu akroge watu kwa sababu alishaingia kwa chama ya nani huduma ya kristo ni kurudisha watu kwa baba kwa baba ukiona mtu ako na makosa msaidie kurudi kwa ndio maana nawaambianga mimi hata mimi ukiona nikiwa na makosa tafadhali tafadha wacha protocol kuja straight niambia pasi hapo uko na makosa pasi tafadhali tubu tafadhali tubu ili usiende mbinguni ukose mchungaji wako kwa sababu shetani alikutumia huku niambia kama umetumwa kwangu kuja uniambie leo wachana na pro ili tusaidiane huduma ya Kristo ni reconciliation so if you realize your sister has a weakness please talk to them explain to them go with scriptures encourage them talk to them waeleze wacha kuingia kwa jetani kumvunja kwa sababu utaanza kumwambia sijui nilikwambia utaanikwa umeona sasa ona ile aibu umeletea kanisa kanisa iko na mwenyewe na mwenye kanisa ni Kristo Mwenye kanisa ni ona ile aibu umeletea kanisa sasa hata hatuwezi sema bwana asifiwe huko nje by the way hata shetani haikuanika bado tutasema bwana asifi asifiwe kwa sababu kanisa iko na mwenyewe na mwenye kanisa ni Kristo yeye ndiye alikufia sisi wo so kazi yako sio ku defend kazi yako ni kuwaleta haleluya waleta kanisani kazi ya Yesu ni kutengeneza That is why he said as the father has sent me so do I send you let's stand And one thing that also excites me about Christ you know Christ would go to their level Jesus kept saying that I was called to serve as in Yesu anasema mimi niliitwa kutumika kwa sababu alikuwa na mwito, alikuwa na huduma ile alitumwa na babake kufanya. Kwa hiyo anasema mimi nilitumwa kutumika. So he would go to them in those dusty streets of Jerusalem, Bethlehem, all over. He used to go to their houses. Anaambiwa uh, anaambiwa rafiki yake amekufa. Rafiki yake alikuwa anaitwa nani? Lazarus Anaambiwa jamaa amekufa na tulia tulia tu mahali but he goes he finds them crying he cries with them He goes finds a, a lunatic mwenda wazimu anakuja anamwambia tafadhali usitufukuze then anaangalia mahali anaona nguruwe elfu ngapi 2000 or the 2000 yeah i think something like that i'm not sure of the number about 
So anaona mangurua huko mingi. Anaamua huyu mtoto wa jamii ya Abraham afadhali wale nguruwe wote wakufe nimlete kwangu. So he cast those demons and they go to the pigs. All the pigs going to the the sea. Then the man is saved because he was a man on a mission. No sparing anything for the sake of the souls of men. And this man goes out there the one that was lunatic he goes there and he is preaching the gospel all over all over telling them about what has happened. Ana hiyo mafitu umetoa wapi? That is why we can't hold our peace because we know what Christ has done for us. That's as we worship God with that song Natamani fanane nawe. Could you be here and you're not born again? You're asking God until when? I want to invite you here we pray with you. You're not saved and you want to give your life to Jesus. You can come in front of me or meet you to God. And could you be there? And you feel you're so exposed that the enemy has gotten an opportunity to crush you. The Lord is in the business of reconciling us. And he wants to reconcile you back to him. You can also come in front and we will pray with you. As we sing that song, we respond to that one. We tell the Lord, please enable me to be a partaker of this ministry of reconciliation. Yes, Lord.
of the times we condemned people, of the times we rushed away people who you died for, God. And we pray that we would be ambassadors of the kingdom of God in the name of Jesus. We pray that the grace that you have lavished upon us so abundantly, that Lord, we will swim in it as we have become vessels of uh, drawing men to you in the name of the Lord. And I pray as a fellowship, as many of us, and in our numbers, you will help us as we go outside there, wherever we work, and in our daily activities, oh God, we shall be ambassadors of the kingdom of God in the name of Jesus. As we go to our lectures, our, our Father, as we walk on the roads, as we ride on motorbikes and we move from one place to another we pray that the radiant presence of god will just be released to men and women oh god releasing love to them and bringing them back to you and so we pray for your grace so we pray for the abundance of your strength in the name of jesus that you will carry us as a fellowship oh god that you will multiply us numerically because we will yet be out with that zeal to bring people to the fellowship where the power of God is at work in the name of Jesus. Lord, we ask you that you do it for us in the name of the Lord. And we pray in our in our struggles as men, in our struggles as men and women, God, you will give us strength. Yet again, we will keep uh, holding on the power of God. Yes, to keep uh, replenishing us, to keep nourishing us from deep within. And that God, we will be vessels of honor. And that God, we will be great ministers of the gospel in the name of the Lord. Lord, that the church of Christ will be edified, and that men and women will come to know you through us. And so help us, Lord, in the many things we do as a fellowship. We will be people who will reconcile people back to you. For as you are sent, so you have sent us. We take it with humility. God, we thank you. And we appreciate you, for you are God, and there is none like you. For this is our prayer, in Jesus' name. Amen. I appreciate the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor, for reminding us our mandate as a church. We are blessed. I'm personally blessed and challenged up to the tasks. The Lord help us. Amen. Amen. Thank you for coming for our service today. You can have your seat. Um, Perhaps you came in later and you are a visitor. Is there somebody who came in later and you are a visitor who would love to appreciate you? You came maybe after we have welcomed our visitors and our guests. Um, anyone? Thank you, thank you, thank you. The Lord bless you and do you good for coming to church today. We appreciate you so much. So we gather in our meetings in the week and also on Friday. The coming week we have three meetings. Wednesday, Thursday. Friday. We pray that the Lord will give you grace to uh, come over and just uh, fellowship with us. Thank you so much. There's a cup of tea we can share and fellowship with one another. And all our fourth years, please, um, as you pick your cup, I will say a word with you again for a few minutes. Thank you. May the grace of our 